Hey, welcome back. In the last video, we discussed about the core principle of a band gap voltage reference. If you haven't checked that out, I would encourage you to do so at the link in the description. Today, we will be discussing about an important concept pertaining to the loop gain of a band gap core. We will be discussing a CMOS variant which is increasingly becoming common as the supply is scaled down and also when BJTs aren't available in the technology at hand. Sometimes a parasitic BJT is available, however, its current gain beta is about 20 which might not be adequate. To learn more about their functioning, I would encourage you to refer to the classic paper by Dr. Brokaw, the lecture by Dr. Ashwin at IATK SSCD YouTube channel and also the chapter on voltage references in Dr. Razavi's textbook. The basic premise is that VBE in the case of a BJT or VGS when the MOSFET is operated in sub-threshold decreases as the temperature is increased, whereas the difference delta VGS turns out to be proportional to absolute temperature. People intelligently combine the two to get a temperature independent voltage reference. Both of the following circuits generate delta VGS, yet circuit 1 is used instead of circuit 2. Let's dive deeper and understand why. To see why, let's look at the loop gain of these circuits. In order to do that, we'll apply a test voltage at the gate and calculate the return voltage as shown. We'll break the loop at the points marked by X. Let's first compute the gain from the gate of the NMOS to the drain of the NMOS. Recognize that this topology is simply a common source amplifier with source degeneration. Note that we are neglecting the GDS and body effect in this analysis. If we consider GDS, it will simply come in parallel with the load resistance, whereas body effect will change the VGS and GM of the degenerated NMOS. The gain is thus minus 2 GMN times the load 1 by GMP divided by the factor due to degeneration, which is 1 plus 2 GMN RS. Next, this negative voltage at the drain of the NMOS, which is also the gate of the PMOS, forces the PMOS to push a current in the NMOS load, thereby generating a return voltage. This common source amplifier topology has a gain of minus GMP times the load resistance 1 by GMN. Thus, the loop gain is simply 2 over 1 plus 2 GMN RS. This is less than 1 in magnitude for typical GM RS values. Hence, this topology is stable despite of having positive feedback. Next, let's look at the loop gain of circuit 2. As before, we apply a test voltage and compute the return voltage at the points marked by X. The gain from the NMOS gate to the drain is minus GMN by GMP. That creates a negative voltage at the gate of the PMOS which forces it to push a current into the load R out. R out is a series combination of the NMOS resistive load and RS. Therefore, the gain of this stage is minus GMP times 1 over 2 GMN plus RS. This is effectively 0.5 plus GMN RS which is greater than 1 in magnitude for typical GM RS values. So this is also positive feedback with a gain of more than 1. This is thus a recipe for instability. I have also simulated the two circuits to verify these claims. As you can see, circuit 1 corresponds to the yellow curve and 2 corresponds to the blue curve and circuit 1 can be seen to have a gain of less than 1 whereas circuit 2 has a grain of gain of greater than 1. Thus, circuit 1 is routinely used instead of circuit 2. I hope that was insightful. Thanks for watching and happy learning.